Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so thrilled to be here because uh, this is a, a, a dream come true. Because we, I spoke to speak uh, with a sad friend about Algarve technology and tech hub more than 10 years ago, so it's fantastic. Today, I try that in this moment, I don't speak a lot. Everybody now speaks twice for three minutes, and I have the same question for everybody. And the question is related about they, them and the country and what they do. So we have here, they introduce uh, alone their, their themselves, but I say that we have Greg, Henny, Mike, uh, Kinga, and Stone, and Trisha, okay, from all the world, okay, <laughs> states, Poland, U uh, Sweden, and U uh, UK, UK, exactly. So everybody has uh, three minutes, and after I do another round of three minutes to, spy, to, to answer to my two initial questions. And the first two question from Greg is, how did you end up here in Portugal? And why did you choose Portugal? Please. For me, it, it's a little more like Portugal chose me. Um, it was just a matter of circumstances and doors opening for me. Um, in, I'm from Los Angeles, and I had worked in the entertainment business. I'd worked in the internet business, San Francisco. And my contract was ending, and I found that I had an opportunity to figure out what I want to do next. I had always wanted to, well, one, I was getting kind of tired of LA. And um, two, I'd always wanted to live in, in Europe. I thought it might be London. I thought it might be Paris. Um, but a friend of mine in the Algarve said, you know what, you should come to the Algarve. And I said, wow, that would be cool, it's beautiful there, but what would I do? I'm, this is 19, or I'm sorry, uh, 2020, 2008. So um, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do in the Algarve? And he said, well, I know that they are, the city of Portimao is developing a film studio. You might wanna get involved with that. Uh, they had just built a, a, a racetrack, and now they want to build a film studio next door. So um, the face of this project, of the film studio project, lived in LA. And um, I was put in touch with somebody who knew him, who knew him. And um, I got in touch with uh, this gentleman in Los Angeles. And he said, sure, you know, if you want to move to Portugal, I'll get you involved in that. And so basically, that's what happened. I, I moved to Portugal started with the Algarve Film Commission in developing concepts for the film studio. Uh, two years later, the economic crisis happened and the film studio project went away. And I decided to stay. And shall I stop there? And, <laughs> and next chapter okay. for next question. Okay, thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you, Greg. I, I want to say something more. Uh, here, we speak a lot about the digital nomads. Uh, uh, Gonzalo did before a fantastic introduction. Here, we have a really a sister of digital nomad that is Joana Gloria with us. But here, we have different stages. We have, uh, I say, uh, veteran nomads, people like me and Greg <laughs> that moved some years ago, people that are really G digital nomads, and people that are just arrived, the newcomer. So it's difficult to say when you stop to be a digital nomad, it became a foreign and you became a veteran. So it's nice to, <laughs> to understand we have different generations, not only the digital nomads and digital kind of people. So Henny, can you try to answer to my two questions, please? Yes, so hi, I am from Sweden. Um, and uh, how I ended up here, it started already when I was 28. I was living in Sweden, which is a very nice country. I'm very blessed to come from there. But it's also, I lived a very stressful life, like full of fear of not being good enough. I was stressing to work, like stressing to friends. And I was never really like living in the moment and enjoying life as we all should. <laughs> so actually when I was 28, I got a burnout. So my doctor said, you can't go back to work for a few weeks. And I took the step and I moved to South Africa other side of the world. And I discovered another way of living, like very much slower and focus on like enjoying life instead of focusing on making a career and living the perfect life from the outside. 
So after two years there, I decided it's time to move back to Europe. And I have never heard about Portugal before. Uh, I heard about Portugal. I mean, I never heard about Lagos before. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, so I was searching uh, online and uh, on my uh, requirement list I had beaches with crystal clear water. And I saw a picture on Instagram from Porto de Mos and that evening I had a glass of wine and I booked a one-way ticket. And this was three years ago and I'm still here. <laughs> and now I have a house and an apartment three minutes from Porto de Mos. So I'm very, very blessed and grateful to be here. So it was Instagram that took me here. <laughs> Instagram helps to take the, the decision of our destination. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I don't know if did you finish to answer the question? Uh, the two questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, Mike, please, how to discover and why you move here? Yeah, so. for sure. So I'm definitely not a veteran nomad. Um, I've only been here for six months now. I was here for three months last year. Um, first moved here from Manchester. I've been in Manchester like a decade now. And uh, I just didn't feel at home. I felt like England wasn't my country. Um, obviously, I've seen the beaches. I saw the, the weather, which is what brings a lot of people here. But when I came here, it was more just to kind of collect my thoughts, think, OK, what do I want out of my 30s? And when I came here, Fairly quickly, I found like Lagos very special, very magical. Um, the people are amazing. The food was amazing. It was very safe. There was so much community stuff going on, so many activities, and I just felt drawn to it. And the idea was I was going to start traveling, right? I was going to go to Asia. I wanted to do a around the world trip, and the first place I came, I'm still here. So, <laughs> so yeah, didn't quite do that one yet. So, um, yeah, and as I started to like go to Joanna's events and started to meet people, I found friendships and I found like we're all here. We've all chose to be in the Algarve, and that's something which connects you already. And I've met, I've started a business with some people I've met. I've met my client over here. I've met so many special people here so far, and yeah, it's. I just feel pulled towards it. It's like. It kind of chose me. I was originally going to go to Lisbon. I had a friend who said Lisbon's amazing, and then I saw the pictures of Camillo and Ponte de Pirad in Lagos, and I was like, what? Where is this place? And I looked into it, and that's what first brought me here. So I'm still here. You fall in love with our God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And. Uh, um, so I don't know if you you spoke speak together. Uh, possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but ev every everybody you decide you de decide together, but perhaps uh, with different <laughs> feeling. Okay. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Yeah, we came together a couple <laughs> for 14 years. So uh, my name is Kinga. This is Tahu. We come from Poland. Uh, the last 10 years before coming here three years ago, we've, we've been living in Berlin. Very vibrant, very fast-paced, uh, technology-oriented life, so we feel like home here. <laughs> but at some point, it came to a turning point for us. We grew our family, we had our second kids on our way, uh, and we just felt like something needs to change. And maybe it will be a bit provoking to previous speakers, but we decided on conscious intellectual planning <laughs> and we took this program called Lifebook which is a personal growth system uh, it's an empty framework that you fill in with your own questions uh, with your answers to the questions given uh, for deepening journey and basically you end up in a, with a hundred page uh, book about your life and you analyze 12 categories of life, like finance, love, uh, quality of life, health and fitness, and so on. Um, and yeah, we've done it together in 2019. And it's individually. individually, then we compared. It became apparent to us it's time for transition. 
<sighs> and it kind of, kind of is also like a spiritual process when you go so deeply um, search your soul desire and then you look at your physical world and it's not bridging together. <laughs> So it's a long way, one brick on top of another, and just building to, to, to close the gap between the ideal life and the life that you currently lead. But that, that, was, that took us on the journey to Portugal, and that kind of manifested. We've seen so many beautiful places in Europe. We've seen the beautiful coast of Portugal. But really, something special just resonated with our our individual potentials here. And um, we felt like w our best qualities of those life visions we've put together can manifest here. So it's almost this beautiful picturesque side and people and connections and nature and sports and teachers, they all expressed from within almost, <laughs> like, right? <laughs> well, we are we are married for fifteen years, so I should agree with everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> but basically, we uh, we did this analytical process separately, and then, like Kinga mentioned, we compared the results. And usually, it is like that: that if one place uh, don't uh, fit to one vision, and then the second place doesn't fit to the other vision, that that means that must there must be a third place, and that third place for us turned out to be uh, Algarve. So we've spent the first winters here. We uh, like we chose consciously that we really need to have a place where we can uh, live health in a healthy way with our family, with our children. Uh, also in the winter time, and in the like, initially we, we thought that we'll just travel and we'll have uh, one place in the warm, uh, warm, warm place in in the winter, and maybe the other in the less, you know, like. Um, for example, in, in Poland or in Germany, where, where we used to live, right, uh, where it's uh, enough um, enough warm to say in, uh, in the summer. Yeah, but then uh, after spending more time in Lagarve, uh, and uh, when we started to actually fulfill our life visions, mm -hmm. and we started to do all the things that we actually truly wished for ourselves, and they manifested here, we decided that we don't want to part from this from that place for uh, for too long so the basically whenever we travel we s were still very happy about going back here and yeah doing all the things that this uh, beautiful region can can provide and it's really really a lot a quick question did you choose uh, did you in your analysis did you find the same solution uh, in your uh, you would say that uh, your analysis was uh, separate uh, the, f the conclusion was the same for each of them. <laughs> yeah, the common vision, the integrated vision was the same. Yeah. It's just we had different ways to get <laughs> there. And we literally had to almost swap the energies because I was living in my masculine, li uh, working a lot in startups and so on. In so finance. I was performance oriented, finance oriented. And Sahu was more on the loving kids side and so on. And we <laughs> had to really <laughs> consciously without in order to make us whole as human beings, we need to swap a little bit. And that started in Portugal. Yeah, I started being more on disaster cooking <laughs> side, but also like uh, thriving in, in my feminine and creativity and going back to the dancing and connecting with some amazing teachers here. And Sahu started uh, leading our projects and opening new business opportunities and planning, planning our life together became just really simpler and more intentional from that point, right? Definitely. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, I have a question I, I'll do later because Trisha will speak uh, about her okay. experience. Um, and yes. I'm Trisha, I'm an American from Laguna Beach, California, so Southern California like Greg, just a little further south. Um, we've been in the Algarve, Portugal since October 2018. And I had told Francesco, it's kind of a little bit of dumb luck that we're here. Honestly, um, at the time, my son was four years old. Um, and in California, and he has a late December birthday. And in California, if you're not five, you can't start kindergarten. So his whole pre-K class graduated and went to kindergarten, except for him and another kid whose birthday was December. So. Um, 
you know, we felt like, okay, well, he's going to repeat the year, so it's, it's a give year. Let's just go abroad for the year. Um, cause, you know, and then we'll go back to the US and he can start kindergarten the next year. Um, and so that's what we did and I, um, I literally, so my husband is a software engineer, so he's remote as well. Um, and I'm a marketing consultant, I probably should have said that. So I'm a marketing consultant, I've had my um, marketing consultancy since 2010 and I have California based clients. So when I had told my California based clients that we were gonna do this year abroad, they were super cool. I thought, <laughs> I thought, okay, it'll just be a year, maybe, you know, I, I don't know what I'll do, and then we'll come back. But they were like, oh, it'll only be a year. Let's work remotely. And so before the whole COVID thing happened, I was already working remotely, doing Zoom, doing um, the Google Meetups, everything, like Skype, um, how everyone was doing it um, during COVID. So anyway, long story short, how we got here is at the time when we decided, okay, we're gonna go abroad, I went online and I said, cheap places to live abroad in Google search bar and Forbes had written this article with like what you would think are you know, Costa Rica, Belize, Dominican Republic, but it did have Spain and Portugal and I just love Europe. So I had told my husband, Spain and Portugal, let's go to Europe, you pick. And because he has, he actually had never really traveled abroad and so I, I feel like I'm more, okay, you can kind of put me anywhere and I'll be okay. But him, he's a little bit pickier. So he, he's the one who, who is searching and um, I don't know, maybe because it's very similar to Laguna Beach, um, Southern California, he had said, I think I like Portugal better. And that's, and that's honestly how we got here. <laughs> it was just <laughs> dumb, it was dumb luck. And we got to, and then that when we came in October, we moved to Albufera, and it was because an Airbnb was available in the Algarve in Albufera. And that's kind of how we're here, and we're still here almost five years later. So anyway, that's <laughs> Great, Tricia. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I have the other two questions for, for you. And uh, perhaps uh, you already spoke about that, but Greg can start. Um, what's your, your business here in this moment? What are you doing? And in your opinion, what is missing or, we, or what is the best things that you find here in Algarve to make uh, living and working better? Hmm. Well, we're, when we last left off, I had um, just moved to Portugal and started a, 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 a consultancy working with the Film Commission and the economic crisis hit and that project went away. So it's uh, 2010 and uh, no one's hiring and I'm trying to decide if I should stay in Portugal. Should I go back to the States? Well, it's 2010, no one's hiring in the States either. So I just decided to sit down, relax and maybe um, maybe try this blog stuff that's happening. Uh, blogs were really becoming popular right at that time. Social media was just picking up at that time. So um, my background is in, is in content production, and I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna start a blog. I'm gonna write about my Los Angeles eyes on Portugal, because everything that was online about Portugal at that time was Casada Street, Spado, um, Bacalhau, and no one was really focusing on what was happening presently in Portugal. It was all about the history of Portugal, which is attractive and uh, wonderful, but for me, kind of young and kind of hip, uh, I wanted to know where the, the cool restaurants were, the, the hot bars, the, the boutique hotels, and so I started writing about that in English online. And um, little by little by little, I gained more traction and uh, more visitors to the site. Uh, Turismo de Portugal even realized that they were not promoting Portugal in that way and they started sharing my content too to uh, explain to the world that things are happening in Portugal now too, not just hundreds of years ago. And um, little by little it just grew. And the audience uh, grew and um, over the years then I started getting questions from readers. I'm coming to Lisbon, what should I do? Uh, what is there to do in the Algarve? I started just my own advice, this is what you do, this is what you do. And then I thought, you know what, 
you should be getting paid for this. <laughs> so um, about 2017, uh, formally uh, created a, a, a travel agency or destination management consultancy to provide itineraries and, and travel services to people coming into Portugal. And this is all basically um, higher end things um, because it's, it's all mostly boutique hotels and, and fine dining. So it's high end travel coming into Portugal. And um, fortunately at that time, guess what? Americans are coming to Portugal now. So, um, so they're coming to the site. They don't know what to do in Portugal. They're calling me or, or um, they are their agents, their travel agents in the US are finding their way to the site and giving me a call. And that's a direction that the company went into. So we handle luxury travel services as well as this online media website. And um, we've also done a deal with a, a high-end villa management company too. So we promote villa, uh, high-end villa management or high-end villa rentals and um, basically uh, do high-end travel to English-speaking <laughs> people coming into the country. Um, for me, the, the whole landscape of business has changed so much in, in the 15 years that I've been here in Portugal. I mean, it's, it's, it was a struggle to, to get anything off the ground. I mean, already the economy was not so good here, so an American coming in uh, with big ideas uh, kind of made a lot of people nervous, and uh, I got a lot of no's uh, in the early days. In, um, it's, it's changed so much, though, in the last few years. Now there's, and to some extent, I think it's generational, too. Um, I think back at that time, it was, you know, people who have been in their jobs for a long time, maybe even their parents had lived through um, Salazar and, and um, and there's still kind of a, an air of, oh, we can't do anything. We're Portugal. We, we, it's such a struggle for us. Um, but things had changed so much. Then Portugal sports teams started winning. And Eurovision, they went in Eurovision. And, and the Portuguese really became more proud. And it was so evident for me to see. I don't know if you could tell uh, and, and, and notice the difference today. But for me, over the years, you can really tell uh, the the personality, the attitudes of the Portuguese people from 10 years ago to now, it's completely different. And a lot of that, I think, has to do with the younger generation who is involved in, in tech, the tech industry, and who has been raised on social media. And they know that they have a world here and that they can build a world here. Of course, all the international investment that's coming in is helping uh, quite a bit, and it's making uh, the, the state budgets much better. But um, overall, there's a, a general sense of positivity, I think, in the market, um, and, and really a lot more innovation and creativity that's happening here than, than when I first moved here. And it's, it's funny, because when I first moved here, I, I would meet Portuguese, and they say, where are you from? And I say, I'm from America. What? Why are you moving here? We don't want. We, we want to move there. No, there's nothing for you here. We want to move to America. And now it's completely opposite. Now the Portuguese are so proud of what they have. They love the country. And um, it's the Americans who are coming through the border in, in droves. And so it's, I, I, it, for me, what's missing? Um, it's, it's just it's, there's almost nothing missing anymore. Um, at, at first, it, it was tough. I would say for for now, it's just specifically Algarve or, or Portugal. Portugal. Well, Portugal's Portugal is Algarve not so there. bad. Algarve, I was going to say, Algarve isn't. Algarve needs, I would say, more partnerships, uh, more exposure in Lisbon and to what's happening in Lisbon yeah. to get some of that attention down here. But uh, otherwise, I, I, I think Portugal is is on a fast track to go high. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I can. I've been here three years in Lagos, and I can also tell that only these three years has been a difference in Lagos. And I think uh, it's a lot because of Diana <laughs> and the community, because now all year is alive, and so many people from all over the world 
And I don't think you can find another place where you can meet new friends so easy from all over the world. I think it's unique, super, super unique. Uh, I was working remote uh, before uh, as a tech recruiter. Uh, I've been working with HR since uh, yeah, many, many years. And I got my first remote job in South Africa already okay. through just randomly, through a connection. Uh, so I was very lucky then also. And I stayed in the same industry. And I recruit mostly yeah, developers, product owners, the whole uh, tech team to Swedish uh, companies. And I hope for the future we can collaborate with Portugal more so we can also uh, use the resources we have here for all the Swedish startups. And yeah, so the borders is not so very clear anymore <laughs> uh, because we are looking for a lot of tech people in Sweden. So it's a struggle. <laughs> and uh, I really like what I'm doing, but I would say I, I'm, I work for living more than work for Live for work now. Live for work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think we have a lot of things, almost like you. I think Portugal is almost perfect. Uh, I don't need much. I need uh, <laughs> pasta lenata and vino verde, and then I'm good. <laughs> uh, but for the future, I, I wish that the community will continue to grow and see more like art and culture and festivals. I love festivals. <laughs> uh, so I want to see it continue to grow. Uh, and also that we can coexist with the local people more so we can inspire each other okay. because I think it's a lot of value to inspire each other. And maybe some digital nomad babies in the future. <laughs> 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 and weddings. Weddings, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Great. No, it's nice because uh, just to follow up say before it is very important the integration with the local uh, local people like uh, you are you are, you are for that uh, great great thank Good. you yeah. mike please thank you yes so um i'm sort of new to the the whole remote working as well um i've been working for myself more freelancing over the last decade and I've only moved into contracting, so retainers in the last couple of years. And with what happened in COVID as well, it meant that I could work from anywhere. And so that choice, the paradox of choice was a, a killer one, but when you've made that choice, uh, and I'd, the first time I came here, uh, I was working with a London-based agency. Um, and the second time I came here, it was working with a client I met the first time I came here. So, um, I'm now in a position to be able to work from anywhere. What I do is I've got a small software development agency called Fort & Co. Um, I partner with companies doing the design and development. Um, I've also started a new business called Shortlist AI with two co-founders also based here in the Algarve, which is great. Um, sort of feels a bit surreal that I've met them here. Feels like it's meant to be and all that, but um, yeah, I think that leads nicely into, well, I'll first say what's the great thing here is, like I said before, everyone's chose to be here. And I think people are very open to meet people here. People are very open to connect, very open to do business together. We all want a good life. And so if you can be authentic and find people who click with that, there's no better place to meet uh, people if you just put the word out in sort of the communities with clients you're trying to find, business partners you're trying to find, there's some really skilled people here. And as I've started to do that, there's so many hidden gems in the communities. Um, in terms of what I feel it's lacking, there's the selfish side of things because I'm going through the whole process of going down the, the D7 road to residency, and I think that could be easier. I think there's a lot of uh, lawyers and accountants which charge an absolute fortune for that kind of advice. And it's very hard, and it takes a long time. Um, so it's been sort of a minefield finding people to help me with that. So I think some kind of fast track, self-service approach would be great. Um, in terms of, especially in the Lagos, like everyone knows the rental situation. So uh, I'd like to start buying somewhere as soon as I can do. So I think some kind of, uh, Something like a first-time buyer for, for Portugal would be good. Um, 
also, the communities are such a big part uh, of how I've met people and how a lot of people have found friends, business partners, etc. I'd like to see the government be more proactive and so supporting people like Joanna and the Nomad communities. I think, like, people are going from visiting here for a few weeks to wanting to spend a life here because of these communities, right? So, like, they are massive. And so many people owe a lot of their friendship groups, a lot of the comfort of, of building a life here to those communities. So, uh, And finally, I would love to be able to hire locals here in time. And so uh, more information with that. I mean, the, the comfort with my business being back in the UK, I will always probably want to go and hire back in the UK and find clients back in the UK. But there's probably locals here which are just as skilled. So uh, some kind of uh, organization around kind of that would be good as well. Exactly what that looks like. I'm not too sure. But, yeah. OK, thank you, Mike. Great. Thank you. It's nice also if you can start to code into the school, like uh, we said before. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Gonzalo uh, did, uh, did an example in the, the speech that in Madeira, the, the, the people work in IT go to the basic school to do a coding game, to yeah. try to, to code. Yeah. 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 I'll try and think of something. To integrate. <laughs> thank you. Please. I let my husband start. OK, thank you. <laughs> do you remember now the question? Yeah. Uh, basically, we work with a program called Livebook. And uh, Livebook is a tool tool that helps to navigate consciously and intentionally the, the basically the whole life and its complexity. And uh, we started to work uh, remotely also before COVID, so I resonate here with you as well. And basically working from here and keeping our businesses uh, in, in the other countries where we used to live before was basically very easy from, from, the, from the beginning. And now actually inviting our clients here to Portugal and letting them see how the in our opinion, highest quality of living can manifest uh, basically in life is, is, I mean, like, is very inspiring. So sometimes people are coming and meeting in a group some, even from four different continents and they meet here on the spot and they like open their eyes that actually they don't require that much in the beautiful environment to, to live their life to the fullest. And I agree also with Mike that the community here is so available and there's so many uh, amazing people who can uh, help like reach the practically any possible activities that would be maybe available in Europe in few major capitals where we can basically learn or teach different disciplines uh, from creativity to very practical things including coding right and uh, yeah that, that's why for us, uh, working remotely from here and uh, inviting people also like to come here on the place and check life, uh, how, how it can work, is basically completely fulfilling. Yeah, and that's uh, that's what makes us sure that we like this is the right place, basically to like this like anchor and starting point from from where we can like reach also outside the, of the Portugal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I would just add that um, we are uh, definitely supporting technology and the, the growth, the digital growth, but we also feel the urge to bring people back to their lives and bodies uh, and simple <laughs> movement and so on. And uh, I think more and more people are more conscious about their health and about their mental well-being and so on. And that's where life, uh, where Por Portugal is a paradise. Uh, we run the Life Book Retreats here, and we uh, try to serve and open people up to the full 3D experience. Some people say it's 5D, <laughs> and that magic happens here, and uh, that they can really align within themselves and feel what they need, feel their breath, tune in. Uh, feel, you know, the nature, connection to people, and they start to be opening, opening to arts like um, movement, body work, breath work, uh, music, uh, art, and so on and so forth. So that's, I guess, that's our mission to also have the other side of the coin and to uh, merge that in a well-balanced, uh, everyone 
tailored by themselves. They're, they're a mixture of, you know, what, uh, where is the intellect, where is the creative power, but that's like where you can really get to the source and, and, and get all these answers out of yourself. Um, yeah, and uh, for, for me, Portugal is not missing much. Our friends who live here for uh, 15 years, they always say, just don't tell people about that Portugal is so great because uh, everyone will think it's a paradise, they wanna move. Yeah, it's true. It's almost like in the shadow of Spain, for instance, right? And it's, it has so much to offer. That um, yeah, that's the, that's still a quest. Like the Spain example, because I used to travel to Spain for last 20 years, like particularly to Malaga quite often. And uh, since we did discovered uh, Portugal in 2014, when we were mm -hmm. pregnant with our first uh, first child, and also the Madeira, we spent the winter there. Basically, I was always saying that. Like people really don't, don't realize how much more beautiful it is here, just just behind Gibraltar and like that this corner of the, of the Europe. So it's we are very humble and we think, of course, like every other Mediterranean country have has like nice people and nice climate, good food and so on. But uh, maybe it's worth to mention that in our opinion, it's like literally like the the best in all of these uh, aspects uh, exactly here. So that's why you know enjoy living here and sharing it with, you know, with other people. Thank you very much for your words. <laughs> Please. Okay, so, I forget the question. It was... Okay. What is your vision here? Okay. You already explained yeah. before. Yeah. Already explained before. Okay. Um, and the, the, the what is missing or what is the value added just yeah. here? Yeah. Okay, so I have, um, I have my own marketing consultancy. I've had it since 2010. Um, and when I was in the U.S., I would obviously go into my clients. I would go and uh, work there d uh, during, you know, normal nine business hours, nine to five. What? Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I should explain why living in Portugal has been and working remotely has been good for me, is because um, I'm eight hours ahead of my California clients and five hours ahead of my New York clients. So that time difference works great for me because I have, I pretty much have the morning to myself to, to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> and I didn't have that when I was in the US because I would have to, I mean even just to go work out for me, I would have to wake up at six in the morning. Now I can go and work out at nine o'clock, 9.30. And that, I mean, I, that, that's huge for me. It just, um, and then I work, I mean, then I work in the evening. But I feel like I can have better work-life balance because, um, because of that time difference. Um, and, you know, I've been able to do things like get yoga, you know, yoga teacher certified. I would never have been able to do that had I not lived here. <laughs> so there's, you know, it's just, it's like better time management for me. Um, and um, I think that's part of the reason why, you know, we're still here because we were going to go back after the year was up, but it mm -hmm. it actually um, it actually worked really well for both of us for our schedules. Um, and then the other thing is that we I haven't really talked about my son. He's he went to a great he's you know he has a really great life here. I mean we haven't talked about, but it's amazing for children to live here in Portugal. It's so safe um, in the U.S. I mean I actually I'm kind of. I'm like, I'm very sad to hear about all these like shootings and these things. I mean, people from the US are coming here because they're afraid for their children's lives, you know? And we, we don't worry about that at all. There's, we don't worry about guns and, you know, shootings in schools. Um, and then the other thing is during COVID, um, my son was able to go to school. I mean, in the US, they, they were locked down. They weren't going to school. So that was, that was the other thing as well. I mean, during the COVID, COVID years, my son was actually going to school and, you know, having like a regular life. So it's, that's part of the reason why we're still, we're still here. Um, it's just, I mean, it's just been a better lifestyle for us. So, um, yeah.
<laughs> in, in your in so short time, did you realize something that uh, should be better, or oh. Is, oh, everything is the best uh, in oh, the paradise? Oh yeah, no, I I love Portugal, but my friend still my my friend still is out in the audience, and she knows I'm always complaining about food in the Algarve, um, which you know for me um, as an Asian, there's no Korean, no Vietnamese, <laughs> lack of. Um, ramen, those kinds of things. But I've noticed now in the last few years that it's it's um, picking up. Like there's actually two bubble tea places here. <laughs> I mean, in the US, they're all over the place. You can go like every other block. So, um, so it's slowly, um, I, I'm finding that the cuisine, I mean, the cuisine is wonderful here. Um, it's fresh and, um, you know, uh, very healthy, but you know, when you go to somewhere like a London or Paris, they do something interesting that they'll add like a peach compote to the, the turkey or the chicken and they don't do that here. So it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's like a grilled fish, <laughs> which is nice, but you know, I'm, I'm excited for like these new, these new chefs that are coming in and actually adding a little bit more flavor to the cuisine. <laughs> You should convince some friend of yours to come here to open a restaurant. <laughs> I know. Well, I tell I tell everyone that I mean, for me, I just love Korean food. There's no, I mean, if anyone knows of a Korean restaurant in the Algarve, let me know. Korean. I cannot find it. Where I go, I literally have to go up to. I know. I literally have to go up to Lisbon, but the Korean food in Lisbon is is delicious. <laughs> Okay, thank you. We have uh, some time, so also for the audience to do some questions, but I have a last question for everybody, but it's very short, okay? Could you resume your experience in Algarve in one word? Can you start, please? Uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but I would say lifestyle. lifestyle. That's, that's what the Algarve is about, and that's what you come here for, and that's what I've experienced, for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. I'm going to say healing. Healing. Yeah. Uh, for me, the, the answer is on the screen. Flow. <laughs> Flow. Ah, nice. And for me, it's definitely fulfillment. Fulfillment. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, for me, it's opportunity. Oh, great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody. Uh, we have some time. We have time to do some questions from the audience uh, or some curiosity, something that you want to ask, please. And, and Thank you. I just wanted to know if language was a barrier for any of you. Obviously, you're all not originally from um, Portugal. So, was language a barrier in setting up your businesses or? Network, you know, just doing business in, in the Algarve. Yeah, please. I have a nice comparison, like, after living 10 years in Berlin, where whenever I went to, like, an official, like, state department of anything, the people working there, even though they could speak English and they know English, they were not al uh, allowed to s communicate with me in English. So I had to go with either translator or with my very, like, clunky German. But here, when I visit the Camara Municipal, for example, in Lagos, then from the guard at the door until the lady at the desk, we are discussing very slowly, which is great. But then we like go through thoroughly through all the material in English, and I literally have only a good experience with the with the language. Yeah, and this from the formal side. And you speak Portuguese, so they don't discourage you if you speak slowly Portuguese. But they are happy and they encourage. Okay. Uh, for me, I would say it's it's not been a problem. Um, I I have tried everything to to speak fluently. <laughs> um, I've taken classes. I've taken the CEF year long course. I've taken all everything. It's just in the Algarve, uh, eu preciso practicar. It, and you can't practice in in the Algarve because the the Algarvians. Here you struggle with Portuguese, and they speak back to you in English. Um, as far as my business, uh, most of my dealings are with people in hospitality or in the service industry that, that caters to international uh, clients. So they all know English as well. 
Um, so it's, it's not been a hindrance. Um, however, I would like to try to get away from that horrible reputation of Americans only speaking one language and try to be able to speak a second language. Um, and eu tento. Estamos. Muito bom. I could only add that maybe with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, teachers from Sao Paulo, then for that reason you might need a little bit of Portuguese, which is then helpful. But otherwise, the English really works, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll just piggyback to what Greg is saying too, because you're exa he's exactly right. In the Algarve, you, you don't really need to, um, to speak Portuguese because mm. um, they'll start speaking t to you in English. But I actually just completed um, my A2 mm. uh, course. So, yeah, woo! It is so, yeah. Portuguese is muito difícil. But what I find um, is that it would be nice to be able to speak because you don't have that same, you know, that same bond or relationship with the Portuguese, which I wish I, you know, because language is so important and that's how you connect. So, but for, for the most part, I, I obviously I work with California clients, so I don't need the Portuguese. But living here, it would be nice, nice to have it. Thank you for the audience and the um, insights. Um, I'm a little bit of a strange animal because I know the Algarve since the 1990s. Um, and I haven't been here for eight or nine years. And uh, I was here, I arrived last, last week and flown back to Germany and coming back because we're doing business here. And it was interesting to get a view from you guys because you're, compared to my background, rather new. Um, but funny enough, um, Mike made a very good point that uh, with regards to um, the fact that if you're building a community of expatriate in any country, it's very important to, um, to engage the people in Portugal and to what you said, for example, what I found the Portuguese people are quite open to engage because, you know, uh, um, if you're a nation uh, of, you know, people going to sea, you're always open because you've explored the world and this is something I like also where I like the Portuguese more about the Spanish people. Um, but back to the point, uh, Mike, when you said what could be um, interesting is to have an interaction with the people and give back literally to build capacity by Portuguese people what, um, on what we do. So literally, let whatever your business is, marketing or whatever, to um, engage the Portuguese people and in the end create an environment where in, I don't know, five to ten years from now, we have a Portuguese base to what Greg said, how the mentality changed by people nowadays in Portugal are rather proud to be Portuguese and saying, well, we're proud to be Portuguese and well, no, we're not going to go to the States because we have a lot to offer here ourselves. Um, the flip side of that coin is to also to um, build that capacity by giving back from the people that are here engaging the Portuguese people. To back to your point, also language is a key to have that happen, and that's something that you know I'm I'm looking forward to um, to the next five to ten years to see how Portugal is progressing on that side. But that's also something we as the expatriate have to work on and have to contribute and give back to this country. Good point. Okay. There are a question from the public, from the audience. A quick question that I want to do, do before. When you, when you did the exercise to choose the country, okay, which of them was the second one, <laughs> our competitor? And the, the point was that we didn't look for a country, we didn't look for a place. Ah, okay. We look for activities, and we look for the way your an hour day would mm -hmm. look like on the regular basis, like how the days build our week, and then those weeks, how they build our lives. So at some point we realized, oh my God, it is all happening here. Like literally one year ago on, on um, the 7th of uh, April on my birthday, yeah. I was sitting on the rooftop and, and just had this reflection that actually that's why it's a fulfillment for me. Because I realized that all the major points of my future like life vision are manifested here. And I'm, I attached base with each of, each of these points. 
and then I, uh, then, then basically there's like no like turning back. Yeah? It's like you know that this is the place, and of course it has all these beautiful features, uh, more more beautiful than elsewhere. Plus I can Instagram. do it all here. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so there wasn't a really a second place, a second option. Well, you we, focus we on knew that. it has to be south, right? Because we didn't want to have a cold winters with children and getting uh, the infections uh, on the like daily basis during the winter time and so on and more or less like very practical reasons with, with the children and the life for our children here is amazing yeah like they can learn music uh, water sports surfing uh, pr practically everything on such a high level which is yeah. like hard to describe yeah? yeah we were considering the canary islands as well we went there a couple of times before and uh, we didn't feel like home there we felt like in a vacation spot Versus here, we felt like really connected yeah. and rooting. <laughs> um, so the bottom line was we didn't look for a home. We just were, you know, living kind of location free. But here, all our internal qualities and our desires yeah. were just manifested outside in the in the physical uh, environment. So it was just our big and surprise and. Community yeah. with like literally, you know, everyone who was uh, supporting us with our with our pursuits was just turning out to be like a world expert on on the subject. Yeah? So that's you know. Thank you. So I was thinking about. Oh, please, there is a question there. Um, two things you don't like in Portugal based on your experience, one of them based on business activities and one of them be, uh, based on your personal experience? Should I, I repeat? Know. Two things you don't like you in don't Portugal. Like. You don't like in oh, Portugal. Yeah, don't. In the personal one of the them business. based on your uh, experience uh, from the perspective of business activities and personal activities. I don't know. Sure, okay, Trisha, I, I can perhaps? start. Um, well, uh, for personal, I think I, I already mentioned the lack of cuisine <laughs> <laughs> choices. <laughs> that, that's important to me. <laughs> um, and yeah, and no, I mean, I. You know, Stahu had mentioned then something with, I, for um, the kids and their activities, it's a very high level. I find that too, which is amazing. You know, my son is doing dance and karate and swimming, and, and the teachers are fantastic here. They're, it's so, it's like high, high level, professional. Um, so I love that. So um, I'm just trying to think um, in terms of business. I don't I, see it's hard for me to say because I kind of have this weird little silo bubble where I'm working like half well, I have one foot in the US one foot here so um, for me the business part works well because I'm li I'm just using Portugal as yeah I mean it's got the we've got the internet we've got <laughs> you know yeah the facilities Perhaps I can say something because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in any case, I'm, I moved here 20, 24 years ago. But in the business perspective, there are, looks like not, but there are some difficulties to do cooperation, business cooperation with other enterprises here, no, in, not only in Algarve, in Portugal in general. Business cooperation is not so easy. Okay? Change before the past, but it's not so easy. On the other side, uh, the infrastructure are fantastic compared with uh, other countries that uh, should invest again to do a new uh, wireless connection and so on. Portugal is, uh, is uh, one of the latest, the newest uh, infrastructure in telecommunication than other European countries, all the European countries. So in the business perspective, in personal perspective, I believe that if you feel well, in a place you feel well in every place. So if you have difficulty in the personal perspective, in my opinion, depends on me. 
and not on, the, on where I live. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if I feel happy, I'm happy in every place. Mm -hmm. It's easy to have a good pers personal perspective. I don't know, there, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, so we are close to the end. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody here on the stage. Thank you, Thank you the audience. Thank you.